Welcome to the Biopharm International Podcast, Research Trends in Biopharma. This podcast is brought to you by BioRad Laboratories, a global leader with a team of over 7,800 employees and a network of operations that serves life science research and clinical diagnostics customers. BioRad helps people live longer, healthier lives. They offer a wide range of instruments, software, consumables, reagents, and content for the growing fields of cell biology, gene expression, protein purification, protein quantitation, drug discovery and manufacture, food safety, and science education. BioRad is among the top five life science companies worldwide. To find out more, please visit them on the web at www.bio-rad.com. And now, here's your host for this podcast, Ethan Castillo, multimedia producer for Biofarm International. Hello, everyone. This is Ethan Castillo, multimedia producer for Biofarm International, and I'm here with Stephen Blakely, the director of drug discovery and the development business at BioRad Laboratories. Thank you for being here today, Stephen. Hello, thanks for having me. To get started, could you describe some of the challenges facing the biopharma industry with regard to drug discovery and development? Sure. Well, drug pricing is a hot topic for sure. There is increasing pressure from patients, payers, and governments to provide people with affordable access to healthcare and therapeutics. As less developed regions around the globe ramp up efforts to expand their focus on healthcare, they also require realistic access to these treatments. Biopharma companies are being tasked with providing better and better drugs while being asked to rein in the cost to get there. However, the cost of developing a drug continues to rise. Estimates vary, but the overall cost to bring a drug to market hovers somewhere above $2 billion, and some estimates put it closer to $4 billion when you take into account attrition for all the drugs that failed along the way. There's always a need for better therapeutics, better health management in general, and not just disease management. Precision medicine is shaping drug development in new ways by driving toward a tailored approach for its patients. One drug does not fit all. This, of course, can complicate the drug development process as additional technologies and analyses are needed to find the right drug or combination of drugs for that right patient. Multiple analytical parameters are involved in tying all of that together in digestible formats for regulatory agencies and ultimately healthcare providers, payers, and consumers is challenging. Further, the ever-changing landscape of biopharma with its many, many partnerships and never-ending M&A activity presents additional challenges. As companies divest or downsize, they sometimes might lose key expertise or competencies to take advantage of novel or complex technologies. They're left then with finding the right outsourcing partner or collaborator to move that piece of the program forward. So how do they pick the right partner? And with such an intense network of companies working together, staying connected can be an obstacle. How are all the pieces of the puzzle coming together? So email, for instance, is no longer sufficient to communicate and share information securely with partners around the globe. And then the patent cliff is on the minds of many, and pharma companies are adapting to stay relevant. Due to lost revenue from blockbusters coming off patent, they're finding new indications for those drugs to maintain revenue or pivoting to other areas of innovation. As a result of this patent cliff, a whole new market has arisen around biosimilar development, which has a faster and cheaper path to market, and so people hope this will then translate to cost savings for patients. As this new development path takes hold, regulatory agencies are now formulating new guidelines to ensure that this shorter path is still addressing ultimate safety for the patient. How have those challenges impacted the way drug development is currently done? Well, biopharma companies are getting smarter in how they're going about developing drugs. They need to fail faster so that they can move on to the right molecule for success. And this means they need better data. They need better access to data and better ways to share data. And more and more, they're looking from a systems biology approach, so it isn't just one piece of data to inform decisions. Largely gone are the days of a scientist or lab being singly focused on their one experiment. For example, just a gene expression lab with no vision up or downstream, or how that gene expression profile fits into the proteomic signature and what that might mean for drug efficacy. Labs are working together to understand the holistic picture, and so the workflow becomes extremely critical. Technology alone is not enough to enable success, and companies are seeking ways of connecting technologies in an innovative way across labs and across partners globally to speed things up. 
We're also seeing outsourcing as a continuing trend as biopharma looks to contain costs or to supplement when they sometimes require a different set of expertise or competencies which might be lacking in their own organization. The virtual biotech company model is a great example of collaborative drug discovery and development. You can have one or two people that bring a molecule from discovery into the clinic without ever actually doing wet lab work themselves. They rely on a network of global partners to move this along, and this again illustrates how critical it is to find the right partners, and then once you do, how critical it is to be able to effectively piece all of that information together in the overall development workflow. And CROs and biopharma are always looking for innovation, be it in technology, supply chain, ways of working together, et cetera. And these innovations allow them to stay ahead of the competition. And many pharma companies want to work together on things that are not IP sensitive, of course, but on things such as supply standardization to ensure a reduction in variation on the parts they buy, for example. And the appetite for collaboration and sharing to develop best practices is there, and this is really helping to move innovation forward. Can improvements in technology assist in solving some of these challenges, and how? Absolutely. As companies look for better and better drugs, technology needs to keep up to give better answers. Improved technology might allow you to find the right target faster, or it might indicate an adverse event much sooner and allow you to change course. When lives are at stake, you can't just settle for okay data. You have to have the highest quality data to make the best decisions. Advancements in technologies continue to improve on data quality and the speed with which it's delivered, and the best companies are going a step further in connecting technologies into workflows to provide the most comprehensive information for informed decision making. Take our droplet digital PCR technology as an example. We brought this technology to market a couple of years ago, and it is transforming how people are approaching research and drug development. The level of sensitivity and absolute quantification that this technology allows is unprecedented, and so DDPCR has emerged as a clear choice for applications like liquid biopsy or the monitoring of residual DNA and biologics manufacturing QC. It's a great example of an innovative technology truly coming to life once in the hands of the scientists. Pharma and diagnostic companies have begun to find more and more uses for DDPCR, and we're seeing real impacts on how that, that is being applied both in the clinic and in drug development programs. What technology improvements is the industry seeking at this present time? Well, sensitivity, specificity, there's automation and throughput, consistency is very important, and reliability, and really innovation around putting this all together in workflows. So ideally, technology improvements go beyond the technology itself. Drug companies need to take outputs from many different technologies and across many different groups and piece them together into really actionable insights to better inform their go-no-go decisions. So overall, they want faster time to market. So whatever in innovations can help with that is what they're interested in. As the drug discovery and development industry becomes more collaborative, what do suppliers need to do to stay supportive? I feel as solution providers, we have a, a real responsibility to step up and be an active participant in driving healthcare and drug development forward, and not just sitting at the transaction level. We need to be open, flexible, and responsive. At BioRad, we don't see ourselves as just a supplier, but as an active partner with our customers. We're continually working with customers across the globe to improve and expand our capabilities to meet the dynamic needs of the market. And BioRad is uniquely positioned as we have both clinical diagnostics and life science arms of our company. We know that it's only through partnership with pharma and CROs, diagnostic companies, and clinical labs that the best advances can be made in technology and workflow innovations to support real advancements in healthcare. Well, thank you for that informative overview. We truly appreciate all of you being here today. This has been Ethan Castillo, multimedia producer for BioFarm International. Thanks to all for listening. You've been listening to the BioFarm International podcast, Research Trends in BioPharma. This podcast was brought to you by BioRad Laboratories, a global leader with a team of over 7,800 employees and a network of operations that serves life science research and clinical diagnostics customers. BioRad helps people live longer, healthier lives. They offer a wide range of instruments, software, consumables, reagents, and content for the growing fields of cell biology, gene expression, protein purification, protein quantitation, drug discovery and manufacture, food safety, and science education. BioRad is among the top five life science companies worldwide. 
To find out more, please visit them on the web at www.bio-rad.com. <laughs> 